I'm just going to talk briefly about how um, web browsers can be used to get access to Windows Azure using Identity Federation from an on-premise Active Directory environment in which the identity comes from Active Directory. So let's draw a little cloud here. This is Windows. Uh, let's. Uh, this is Windows Azure. And this is the on-premise environment on this side. So let's put in here an Active Directory domain controller. Let's put in an Active Directory Federation server. And let's put in a client computer running a web browser. Here we are. Okay, on the active, uh, sorry, on the uh, Windows Azure side, we have um, uh, instance. Let's just say this is a web role. Uh, instance zero, and um, we also have a service which is sort of linked into um, Windows Azure and that's called the uh, Application Fabric Access Control Service. I'm going to draw it as a server, it's actually you end up with a partition of a service but let's just think of it schematically as um, a server. It's called ACS, Access Control Service. I don't think that's a particularly good name because it, it makes the assumption that you only use it for access control and it's more like um, identity integration and access control. Um, uh, IDACS, I don't know. Um, I just don't think it's a very good name, but it's the name that's uh, that's there. Okay, so let's just see what happens. The user comes in in the morning and they do a login. They hit Control Alt Delete and they do a login. That results in them doing um, an interaction with the Active Directory domain controller. There's a whole load of data goes up and down across this channel. Um, usernames and passwords don't go across there. Or, or rather usernames do but passwords don't um, but essentially what happens is the the client proves to the Active Directory domain controller that it knows the password that it has knowledge of the password and that this results in um, there being a Kerberos ticket cache here on the machine and it will have a special type of Kerberos ticket called a TGT a ticket granting ticket that's great. So that means it can use that ticket to be granted service tickets to go to other services. Now let's imagine sometime later a user comes in and they go to the web application. Well the web application, let's imagine that it has at its front end Windows Identity Foundation. And that what has happened is that this application has been set up as a relying party to ACS. So this is a relying party and as far as this relying party is concerned ACS is an identity provider. And in turn another piece of setup that was done was that a trust relationship was set up between ACS and ADFS. Now to ADFS looking that way Let's draw the eyeball looking outwards. As the eyeball looks outwards, this looks like a relying party. To ACS, looking in that direction, let's draw the eyeball looking in that direction. Uh, ADFS looks like an identity provider. So you can see the relationships between the entities are different. This is an IP, an RP relationship, and yet this is an IP an RP relationship. You can see that ACS is, is fulfilling the roles of both an RP and an IP, a relying party and an identity provider. Okay, so as I said, the user um, tries to go to the web application. WIF says, well, um, you're not authenticated, but I have a rely I have a relationship with an identity provider, this one over here. And so it redirects the user. 
and the user goes to this ACS server. The ACS server runs a process called Home Realm Discovery, HRD. Now there are a couple of ways that this could work. One of them is that the ACS server could put up a web page with a list of uh, links to organizations that it has trust relationships with. So it might have a trust relationship with another organization here and another one over here and so on. Um, alternatively, when the user in the first instance goes to the application, they can provide their home realm as an argument to the URL. So if they were like coming from a portal, you might want to pre-configure the portal's link with the home realm of the uh, user. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Um, the user has hit Whiff. Whiff has said, I've got a trust relationship with this thing. It runs Home Realm Discovery and it finds out that it needs to redirect the user through either this mechanism or through the um, Home Realm argument being put on the end of the URL. Um, and it pushes the user to their home ADFS server. Now, as soon as they hit this ADFS server, um, well, it's a Windows service and it uses Windows Kerberos based authentication. And so um, what happens at this point is the, um, the TGT is sent to the domain controller. The domain controller produ produces a service ticket and that service ticket is passed down to the client. The client now uses that service ticket as part of this connection up here presents that to the um, Active Directory Federation server and it says, aha, you're authenticated and I know who you are. Now what it can do is it can query Active Directory and it can pull back some attributes. So what it does, let's just get rid of the eye here. Oops, I did that wrong, didn't I? Uh, let's try again. Um, so now what it does is it creates a SAML token. So let's build a oops. <laughs> let's build a SAML token here. With that set of claims in it. And the SAML token then gets signed by the Federation server. So it's got a signature on it. Which comes from the Federation server. And it passes that into the browser and redirects the browser with post data to this access control service. The access control service can now validate the signature on that SAML token and if it's valid it produces its own SAML token. So what should we use? Uh, orange. So it creates a SAML token over here and um, what it might do is it might simply you know copy a number of attributes. Um, or it might take a couple of these attributes and run them through a rules engine to manipulate the attributes or the claims as they're called. But the ACS service issues a SAML token, posts it back to the web browser and sends the user to the application. The application now has received this SAML token well, the SAML token was signed by the this signature on here. It was signed by ACS, and so you can see now that the um, the web role instance zero can see that it's got a SAML token which has been signed by its own ACS service. So you can see that um, by by using ADFS and by using ACS together, you can have a complete environment in which you're not prompted for credentials aside from the ones that you use in the morning when you log on with control alt delete you're not prompted for credentials and yet the web role knows who you are and can use the uh, claims that are in the SAML token which is issued by ACS remember the ACS token uh, started off life being issued by the ADFS server and being passed into it okay I hope that explains it to you and I hope you find it interesting